Well, hello everyone. It's uh, been a few days since I've done a video, I think, actually. I've just been trying to do them when, uh, as and when I can. I think the last one was either Monday or Tuesday. Days are blending, but uh, it is, in fact, Friday today, and uh, it's that day of the week, or that, that half of the week, where um, I realise as I look into the camera and see my own uh, appearance, that uh, it's the, the time when my face is a bit fuzzier and my hair is a bit uh, even messier than usual. Um, but I will be making no attempts to cut my own hair or to have anyone else do it for that matter. I'll wait until the um, the professionals are allowed to do it again and uh, leave it for them to do, I think so. But um, it is indeed Friday. I hope everyone's weeks have been okay thus far and everyone's doing doing all right. Um, I just had another uh, wee, just be wee couple of verses I want to share with you. I came across this morning. Um, the last time I did this, I think we were looking at Philippians three, uh, whereas here what we have is something from Joshua, the Old Testament, Joshua chapter uh, twenty-one. So um, we've seen this far. If you were reading from Genesis onwards, we've seen that Gen uh, that Jesus, blah, 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 that God promised to Abraham to give him these descendants. Uh, to put these descendants in a land um, that was that would be their own, the promised land itself, the land that God had promised, sworn to give to them, uh, to give to Abraham's descendants. And we've seen that we've had Genesis, we've had that, we've had Exodus and the people in Egypt being released from Egypt. We've had um, them wandering in the wilderness and then grumbling and then being punished and uh, having to be in there for 40 years and wilderness. All this time out of Egypt, they've been led by Moses. Moses sees the land. At the end of Deuteronomy, which is the kind of pre reminder as before going into the land about what God expects of them, Moses dies uh, just as he sees the land but doesn't get to go in. Joshua takes over the leadership um, of the people, and the book of Joshua is really about God bringing them into the land through Joshua and through um, the people themselves. And so, but um, in reading over the past couple of days, uh, getting through Joshua and read chapter 20 on this. They're, they're getting some instructions as they're in the land now, and we're looking at uh, um, all the uh, inheritances for the various tribes, all the dividing up of the land, what life should look like now that they're in the land. Chapter 20, the cities of refuge. Chapter 21, and the cities and the pasture lands that are given to Levi, just how everything's divided up. And you get to the end of the chapter, and there's a really interesting couple of verses. Um, verses 43 to 45 of chapter 21, which says this. Uh, Thus the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he swore to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it, and they settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their fathers. Not all of their enemies, uh, no, sorry, not one of all of their enemies had withstood them, for the Lord had given all their enemies into their hands. Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. All came to pass. So that little section there, um, before we hear some more kind of narrative stuff about what God expected of them all to do and, and how the land was to be divided up. And now they were in this land. Uh, the writer concludes this bit uh, really by talking about the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God, how God kept his, the word that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the people, and how he kept that promise to them. He was faithful to them. He didn't break his word. He didn't break his covenant because God doesn't do that. Uh, the promises that he made to Israel came to pass here. And that's what the writer is emphasizing here. Is Joshua's, uh, sorry, is God's faithfulness to the people. And you see that throughout their history. You see that through his faithfulness to them, as we said, you know, all the way up to this point. Obviously, following that, what you see is God not failing his promises, but the people failing their end of the covenant. They fail to worship him. They fail to uh, keep his commands. And as they were told in Deuteronomy, if they did that, it would be disastrous. And so, um, and so the, uh, yeah, so here we have it in, in Joshua. As you go into Judges, though, that's where the, you see that unfolding, uh, where people did what was right in their own eyes. Um, people committed all the evil in their own eyes. And then you get into them wanting a king, 
um, after Samuel uh, uh, and Samuel points for them a king, even though they're warned about how terrible that will be if they have a king. They, ha they have one anyway. And uh, First and Second Kings and Chronicles is just king after king that uh, for the most part just turn away from God. Of course, you see this continuing uh, and and the troubles that they have in the land until, yeah, well, yeah, uh, for the rest of the, the, the Old Testament, really. And, and uh, But what's seen there is God's faithfulness, but maybe perhaps the faithlessness of the people that God still keeps his word. He keeps his promise. He keeps his covenant. God doesn't fail on his end because he never fails to keep his word. He never fails to keep his promise. And as the new people of God and the one people of God, that whether we're... Jew or Gentile or whoever we are, we're, we're all brought into one people, the new humanity, that one people read Ephesians 2 and Galatians 3 as the people of God. Now, um, the faithfulness of God remains to his uh, His people today, which is Christians, his people. Uh, he, he His faithfulness to us uh, continues. And um, I think Paul says somewhere to Timothy that even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Um, God is faithful to the promises that he has made to us as Christians uh, and that he will he will keep those. He will see us through to the end. Uh, he will bring us into the greater land, the, the greater um, land that we look forward to now as Christians, um, getting to be with him. Either we, um, whether we die before Jesus returns, we go to be with him and enjoy his presence or whether Jesus returns uh, in our lifetime and we I get to enjoy a new creation with him forever. We get to enjoy the new heavens and the new earth, uh, that, that land here. But we know that whatever the case, God is faithful to his promises. And he always has been and he always will be. Um, and I just love that the way that this is put here in Joshua, that now that they're seeing themselves in the land, now that they're enjoying some of the benefits of that, now that they're... Um, dividing everything up and setting up all the, the rules and all that kind of stuff and um, it's evidence of God defeating their enemies for them of um, keeping his word to their forefathers and of bringing them into this land and all of God's word coming to pass what an amazing thing and it's the same for us our spiritual enemies will be defeated uh, those who oppose the church we as well I mean we pray for their salvation but whatever the case we all have to stand before God and everyone We'll have to give an account. Uh, but we know that God will keep his promises to his people. And that's a wonderful thing for us to know the goodness of God, uh, the faithfulness of God. And that I guess at this time as well, when everything's going around us, that is, sorry, going on around us uh, with all that's happening, uh, that we have a, a God who is for us, who is with us, uh, who can be against us. Uh, he is the one who will see us through. He is the one who will keep his word to us. Um, because he is a good God. He's not like us. He keeps his promises. He keeps his word. Uh, and um, we can hold on to that in the midst of anything else, uh, that God is good and that he is faithful. It's the same God that Joshua and the people served. Um, but it's even better for us as, as new covenant believers. And so um, and uh, we look forward uh, to being with him and are thankful that he's a God who keeps his word and he keeps his promises to us. So I hope that's just a wee bit of encouragement for you today and um, look forward to, well, uh, seeing you. As you will see my face, I will see your comments on Sunday and uh, speaking to everyone soon.